Okay, thanks Colin. For anyone in the room who doesn't know what Seaman says or what we do, uh, we provide the uh, mission critical information services for all local, local authority schools, both primary and secondary uh, across the land. Um, we are involved in two of the, the big projects uh, for the, the digital partnership, and I just want to give you a, a brief update today on those. The first one is Next Generation Seamus, that's a replacement for our, our current ageing system. And the second one that we're working on in collaboration with our good friends at the Improvement Service is uh, the online services for parents and carers. So, uh, why do we need a next generation CMIS? Well, the existing system has served us very well up to date. It's lasted uh, since the, the, the tail end of the, the 20th century, actually. But it's a very old system. It's old technology, lots of technical debt in there. It's creaking at the seams. It's a thick client <coughs> service as well. Uh, and it's really long overdue for replacement and uh, we need to get a new system in place as, as quickly as we possibly can. The same as team uh, make the best of uh, the, the job at the moment, sweating that asset. Uh, very good availability, 99.9% .9 and over. Teachers don't think that. On the customer survey they think it's about 73-74% for availability. Uh, but they tend to forget it's just one link in a long IT chain and if any one of those links breaks, it seems as fault. But the, the, the fact is it's 99.9%. We do deliver a fast response rate as well across the, the P1 to P4s for the help desk calls. Uh, we aim to hit those at 90% uh, within the, the target timescales and we do that across the, the board. However, we have to realise there is poor customer satisfaction with the current old product. Uh, we run um, customer surveys every term, every school term, and consistently they come in round about that figure of 63.7%. So that's not good. Um, it's a poor user interface, it's not intuitive, it's very hard to navigate around, it's, it's overly complex. And in terms of remote access, it's very poor as well. So it tends to tie the teacher to his classroom and to the, to the, the desktop. So not good. So what we're doing about it, we intend to build a brand new product. Uh, we've been working on it now for some time in terms of working through a proof of concept and the, the design. We have started a procurement of a co-developer working in cooperation with our good friends at Scotland XL who are in the room today as well. Uh, we're down to the final two in that, uh, that particular exercise and there were many people here in the room who participated in our evaluation, the latest evaluation in that procurement, so thanks to you who have been involved in that. Your services will be called upon again shortly when we move to the, the best and final offer stage. Now, the reason we're trying to procure a co-developer, that's the, that's the low-cost option. Uh, we're trying to get about £4 million worth of development for about one and a half. Uh, the, the catch being that the co-developer can then take that product and sell it and market it elsewhere in the UK or elsewhere in the world. And, and realise some value that way. So that's, that's the offer that we're working on. Uh, there will be additional operational costs as we've worked our way through the proof of concept and the procurement. We've identified there'll be some additional technologies and we really do need to beef up the security as well for the, the new system. So that will incur some additional operational costs. Uh, we're building that into a budget submission which we're presently just starting to consult with. We've put together a five-year budget for this to, to cover the, the complexity of the transition to, to next generation and also for the next thing I'm about to speak about, the, the online services. Now, I will say though that in terms of benchmarking, we're about £4.50 per pupil per year and uh, the opposition down south, the market leader, around about £8 per pupil per year. So we do deliver very good value for money. Next generation CMS will add about maybe 10 pence per pupil per year to, to that figure. So moving on now to online services for parents and carers. Uh, we have gone out and engaged with local authorities over this particular project and uh, we, we, we're following up with some more engagement sessions starting this week in fact on Friday in Glasgow. Uh, but just to give you a quick flavour of where we've got to, there's been lots of consultation, lots of engagement. This particular informatic is a result of some Ipsos Mori exercises, focus groups that they took place for us across the country 
uh, seven different focus groups. And no real surprises there in the feedback that you're seeing. There's a, a real appetite for it from parents, as you would imagine. They're very keen to see these services being delivered online. And you can see the key services there that they're identifying they would like to see on the, the right-hand side of that, uh, that slide. So the parents are all for it. Uh, they can't wait for it to, to be delivered and be available. Uh, this is the, the roadmap uh, as it looks at the moment for delivery for next year and we're looking to, to launch the, the parents portal as we have uh, named this, uh, this, this particular service. We're looking to launch that in quarter one of 2018 and that's, that's calendar year I'm talking about here. And you can see the kind of services there that we're looking to, to introduce. We're working on the APIs at the moment, uh, particularly the key one is the parent-child link to make sure that only the, the, uh, the correct uh, child's information is, is really to the, the people who are applying for the service online. Uh, so that's, that's the fundamental one that we're, we're looking to crack uh, this side of Christmas. Uh, we'll then go on to deliver some of the early online services on the back of that. There'll also be uh, a lot of, of links to other services uh, that parents want to, to access because they want to see everything in the, in the one place. So that's the whole idea behind the, the parents portal. You can see there over the, the remainder of 2018 how we plan to roll out some additional services. And there will need to be some extensive consultation with local authorities over some of these services. Uh, because whilst it may be technically possible to provide there may be some policy or operational difficulties over, over providing them to that timescale, uh, but we will be engaging significantly over, over those services. In terms of the costs, uh, as far as the, the seamless element of it is concerned, it will involve some additional cost in terms of producing these APIs for integration uh, and also maintaining them on an ongoing basis. So again, that will form part of a five-year budget submission that we're taking around local authorities now. Uh, the, the costs will be heavier in the earlier years, obviously, as we build these APIs, but it will run down to a 10% support cost thereafter on an ongoing basis. Uh, so we believe it will be really good value for money, and it will be a real catalyst for digital transformation across the country. And last but not least, just a glimpse to the, to the future in terms of online services. And this is crossing over into another area where we're looking to, to help local authorities. And it's about provision of, not quite coffee yet, it's looking to provision of early learning uh, and childcare and the expansion of to 1140 hours. Uh, currently we've got a nursery application management system that 24 local authorities use across 2,000 nurseries but it is a nursery application management system uh, and for this particular initiative we need something that will we'll manage across nurseries and childminders as well. So we're looking to develop a new system, make it available through the parents portal as well and, and allow parents in the future to, to book their childcare and book their nursery applications and pay for it online. Uh, so we think that will be a, 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 great, a great addition to digital transformation for local government. So hopefully that's given you a whistle-stop tour of two of the, the key projects that we're working on at the moment. Uh, if any of you are coming along to the, the session in Glasgow on Friday, I look forward to seeing you there along with Martin at the back of the room. Martin's going to be there too. And uh, we're really, really excited about the future. We think there's a great digital future for education and uh, we're really looking forward to 2018 to, to crack on with it. Thanks, folks.